Uh, first action uh, regarding closed session business as appropriate, including the particular amendment or suspension of existing board policy. Susan, do you have to do it? Yeah, hold on. I shouldn't have moved so fast because I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I'm just <laughs> I don't even have my word docs up here. Can I hear there? So, I didn't realize we were going to hit this right away. All right, let's see. This is not working. Oh, shoot. Get that back there, right? Do you have yours? No, not yours either. Okay. Are we waiting for you? <coughs> Well, I, I have to have the screen up, so I, I, it's not clear to me where we, where we are. Where we are. I didn't so I have item D on the agenda. Okay, so we go right to that. We're not, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see. It's with the motion. Too. Okay, got it. Okay. All right. Um, I move to suspend policy 9130 to expand the role of the board in order, in order to hear directly from the complainant and, if appropriate, to follow up with relevant staff. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Here now, roll call vote. Uh -huh. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Public appearances? All right. Consent agenda. I have approval of the consent agenda as presented. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Oh, wait. Uh, I, I, consent uh, agenda, uh, there's no. I, I think, really. We always do an announcement afterwards. I know. I think we should. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'll behave myself. But I'd really like to pull a, re a retirement off of the agenda and vote no. I believe this. No, I, I'm just joking. <laughs> oh, gosh. I, 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 I believe, believe the superintendent. Well, it is appropriate. That. Totally inappropriate. Uh, I'll behave. It is. Please do it. I know. <laughs> I'll feel like it. You will. I will. Come on. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. See back there. Recognition? Okay, so the first recognition, as was referenced in the consent agenda that the board just approved, was the uh, resignation of our high school principal, Paul Brost. And um, I would add that we certainly accept this with regrets, but we're also very excited uh, for Paul, uh, his future, and happy for him, and certainly very, very appreciative for the, oh, yes. the work that he's provided for the district, our students, and parents. So thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. 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 That's good. You should keep it that way for a while. <laughs> keep the options open. <laughs> okay, then I have a couple of additional recognitions. Um, congratulations to the Mineral Grove Silver Connection, who had a great performance at their first competition of the season. They were awarded grand champions and took home additional honors of best vocal group and best choreography. Additional honors went to MG Sewan Senior, it's going to be Owen Growth, who was awarded Best Male Performer of the Day. It's Groth? Groth. I'm sorry, thank you. Okay. Owen Groth. Nice. Uh, GDS students participated in the Young Authors and Writers Conference at the Milwaukee Art Museum in December. They collaborated on a book entitled Art of Writing that will be published in May. Congratulations to our students. And students at Winnequa organized a food drive for St. Stephen's before winter break. Almost 1,600 food items were delivered. Thank you to all students and families who contributed. Thanks. Right, thank you. <coughs> Correspondence. Correspondence moved to superintendent report. I have one item to report on. Um, that just occurred this week as regarding um, our agreement with the Mass in the Metropolitan School District and our New Westo Mundo, um, uh, their New Westo Mundo Charter School, and the agreement that we have had in place uh, since 2012 uh, regarding uh, the availability of five seats for Monona Grove resident students. Um, MMSD was just notified this week from DPI that there is an issue with compliance to charter school law in that um, preference cannot be given to a set number of Nona Grove students uh, based on their residency. 
And the issue is because MMSD has a very long waiting list and they turn away Madison resident students every year. Right. And so, but our Monona Grove students are getting priority seats before the Madison residents. So they were informed of this um, potential you know, violation. Um, and so they have their legal counsel looking into it. We have consulted with our legal counsel and at this point, you know, waiting for a response to that. But until that, uh, we have additional information. Normally we'd be sending out communication to our families at this time about the availability of seats. We'll put that on hold until we get more information. So I'll certainly up the board, date the board regularly as soon as I have more to report. Is there an indication that could impact um, families who are already currently have been enrolled there? Yeah, or? we're not sure. We, we okay. have not gotten well, given, so. the, given they have to yeah. enroll in kindergarten and other things. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. So well, hopefully they just grandfather and, and keep them there. Yeah, I, I, nice. I mean, the issue yeah. is about the process for accepting new enrollees. Right. So right. I, that would be the whole. It's interesting it didn't get yeah. it. Now, I will also add one other piece of information. The initial response from Madison is that they will be looking to um, apply for a waiver would be one possible okay. response. And so they're you know preparing that. But as I said, our legal counsel hasn't had an opportunity to fully review and consult with theirs. Right. It is, of course, a joint agreement. And so we certainly have a stake in that. And, um, so as far as why did this come up now is just through a review process at DPI and as you know they have different administrative staff that come and go and some people look at things differently than others. So. Right. Interesting. Yeah, right. I, I was going to say is this a joint agreement that we have with them which makes us a participant in this? Yes. And I mean isn't it just that we can't discriminate against those three seats that are sort of ours to, I don't know. Well it's based on yeah, the basis of the this you know, um, and the, um, correspondence is on charter school law. Right. So. Yeah, but Madison can give priority to Madison student, students. No, that. For open enrollment into the charter school. Well, that, the because school. it's the instrumentality of the school yeah. district yeah, that Mr. Right. Munger is, that the, the district has more control and they have a responsibility right. to provide the education for students in the Madison School District because yeah, so, it's an instrumentality. Yeah. But my question is, does the joint agreement also make it an instrumentality of the Monona Grove School District? No, I doubt it. Yeah, no, I don't think so. No. Not according to the charter no. school. Right. Yeah, and the charter school law is very clear. We're aware of that with our own, you know, G21, that mm -hmm. when there are more applicants than seats available, it must be done by lottery. Right. Okay. I mean, I'm just wondering if there's... Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. interesting. Okay, well... Best on that one. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, real quick before we move on, I guess, and again, not for a long discussion, just a number of our board members were on the board when that original agreement mm -hmm. um, was took place in 2012, and um, and I was just a little bit curious about you know that the how that started, and was that a request of our board with that lease agreement that those five seats. I think it was. It was part of our rental agreement, and I don't think it ever occurred to us to look at the legality of that. But it was. I, yeah, I got correspondence from them. Okay. There definitely was scrutiny they, they, from legal counsel. They did look at it. Okay. Yeah. So we have two separate agreements: with the lease agreement, and then the 6603.01 agreement okay. about. And, you know, and they yeah. were all hand in hand. And so at the time, uh, they did feel. My like thought that. was that the 6603.01 agreement was what made that legal because. You know, because right. we have an agreement yeah. with right. them, and it sort of makes it part of our district. So those sure. seats are essentially part of our district, and we would have to fill them by lottery. Um, Which by we the do. same rules that we would use for our open enrollment right. students. Well, I mean, well, actually, not even for our, we would fill them by lottery from applicants yeah. under charter school rules. Yeah. So clearly, the board's legal counsel at that time felt the agreement was legal. Within the And it was law, never right. yeah, okay. contested or questioned by DPI until okay. now. And just to be clear for everybody, there's five seats. Three of them are, uh, two of them, two of the seats are, we pay for, or they're essentially open enrollment rates for those two seats, and three are tuition waivered streets, uh, seats. Is that not correct, or is it? Two or three, three we pay for. Two or three, three we pay for. Mm -hmm. And there might be a different, I'm wondering, there also might be a different application of the, the law to those different groups of seats. Yeah. 
So okay. said, as soon as I get a response from our legal counsel, I'll make sure I keep the board informed on that. So, all right, thanks. Okay, moving the board reports. Uh, Susan Fox, with the personnel committee. All right, personnel committee did meet yesterday, and because we met on the subject of bargaining the night before, you all saw the same documents that we shared in the personnel committee, and I really have nothing to report other than that. Um, the negotiating team will be getting back to us. We have another date set up on January 27th, um, at 4 o'clock, um, with their thoughts. They are interested in making some changes from our proposal, but um, we're moving along. Not in, not, in the, not in the structure, but in the, yeah, some of the way that we're talking about the, the way the base, the, what they're bargaining is distribution of the base wage, and that's what they want to tweak. So there'll be more, hopefully, at the end of the month. Um, Peter, yeah, sustainability. Um, we met on December seventeenth. Um, that, but that was really a very, uh, very much a working meeting where we were talking about how we can move forward on the five things that I talked about the last time I presented a uh, report here. And um, so I, we don't have any conclusion. We essentially just pro we were talking about process and moving forward on those. So there isn't any anything to report out at this point. Okay. Susan, man. Um, we met on December 19th and we discussed um, Board Policy 5113 full-time public school open enrollment and the fact that our policy is basically our written policy versus the NOLA, NOLA policy and whether or not we wanted to consider um, some of the components of that policy. So we're going to continue to look at that. We're going to look at some sample policies and kind of see what we think. Um, in the past, we've been comfortable with that. And we would certainly work with Jared um, before major changes were made. Uh, then the second policy we talked about was video surveillance and electronic monitoring. There have been some, a few statutory changes that we needed to look at just a little bit. So we reviewed that as well. And um, we'll be bringing those to the board. All right. Moving to possible action items. 2020-2021 uh, open enrollment recommendations. Okay, so you may recall that annually the board must approve um, open enrollment seats for the following school year in January um, every year. That's a statutory requirement. And so there are a couple documents, the actual re recommendation document as well as um, an enrollment document with some background information for the planning. And uh, Jared Rosing compiles this and puts this together for us. So I'll let him walk you through the document and the recommendation. Um, sure. So the recommendation format is a, a little different than it's been in the past year. So in the past years, that document would have showed the grade level and then our total open enrollment by grade, and then it would just list special education of, um, as a whole. Um, mm -hmm. However, the law does require us to identify open enrollment by program, and so that's why you see that it across the board. So uh, you can see that um, we're looking at with special education, um, of those 176 spots for open enrollment, it's not 14 or, or, or a total of 16 for special education. It's not additional to the 176. The 176 is exactly um, the overall open enrollment seats that we collect. Now, how that calculation looks, and I understand that that on the grade level looks large, but you gotta remember that we have, um, some of our grade levels have two schools that combine into one, and we don't approve based on building. We, base it on grade level. So the document that I attached for administrative, under the administrative content, shows you our calculation. And when we're doing our open enrollment um, calculation, we use our class size goal. Um, so based on rolling our kids forward and uh, looking at potential residential growth, and then looking at the number of sections that we currently have, and the number of sections that we're projecting for next year, uh, we determine uh, what the average class size is. And if that average class size is below the class size goal, the difference is ultimately our open enrollment. And that's pretty clear in our board policy, and it's pretty clear in um, state law that that's how we're supposed to do it. Obviously, we can take into um, account 
potential enrollment, but they also want us to have the justification of why we're saying that you're potentially going to have 15 new first graders. And if we haven't had 15 new first graders you know, in the last five, seven years, we really can't justify that right now. Now, obviously, if we had some historical data that's showing us that, we can utilize our enrollment studies, and we, we, we're able to incorporate that. Um, but what's important to also know is that you know we're meeting our board's, our board's class size goal, but then we also have maximums. And if you look, for example, um, in kindergarten, the goal for kindergarten is 20. And so if we have eight sections, the maximum size of that class can be up to 23. Not that we're planning to go to 23, but right now we're planning to staff at the goal. If we did have a large number of open enrollments, we could, or a large number of residents come in, we could actually take 24 more kids in that grade level before we would hit the maximum. So we feel pretty confident. Um, and something that we've changed last year, uh, going into open enrollment, typically we've been pretty conservative in the January numbers, and then we come back in July. Um, and ask for more. And last year we were at um, approximately 140, 145 seats. Um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to be upfront and try to do our projections to the best of our ability. Mm -hmm. um, so we're not coming back in July because the open enrollment period starts at the beginning of February and runs through the end of April. Um, and it is a major um, task to identify the number of families that do apply. But then if we do go back in July, trying to get those kids to get enrolled, and we're accepting them, and we're working through the wait list, by being able to approve those at open spots in January, it allows us to process those applications early on so our schools can really plan for the kids that are coming. Now I can tell you based on the numbers that we're recommending, on the last couple of years we have not even received some of those number of applications for kindergarten. You know, typically we've only seen 15 on average in the last couple of years for kindergarten and first grade. Uh, right now, <coughs> we are looking at a little larger than that um, for the seats. So I do feel confident we're probably not going to fill all the seats, but. And then obviously, as we um, open up a school in a couple of years, then um, there's going to, I mean, these kids, we are transitioning them through and continuing to monitor what they look like in future years at different grade levels. Dean? Hey, uh, on open enrollment, do they, is there a, when they apply, do they have a, choice of school or do, do, or do they take potluck or whether they're so cottage grove or whatever? Right? applies for open enrollment they can put a school of preference uh, but the, the school district has complete um, ability to place them wherever so for example we might have an individual that applies for first grade and puts down they would like to go to Taylor Parade but when we do the random draw and we pull them out at the spot that we have available is at Winnequa they get placed at Winnequa. Um, we do try, but if they get pulled out and there's uh, spots at both of those schools, we will then obviously respect and honor their preferred school. Sue. And Jared, I just want to clarify that the, the open enrollment seats that we're looking at right now for 4K are all off-site? Yes. Those are all off-site locations? As of right now, that's where the, we're looking at the space. We don't specifically say that in the approval because if we have some changes in resident, right. we might end up placing some students. I was just I just saw zeros at the other yeah. schools and then yes. saw that up there. Okay. Uh, I'm just curious about this only at the high school and maybe Paul can answer this question. Um, you know, where we're having twenty five students and the question really is, do the open enrollment students look like the Monon Grove students in terms of the classes they take, or does it change the in any way the classes and the distribution of classes that we offer. But I don't have that in front of me, but anecdotally, I'm having them come in the summer and enroll. It, they're pretty similar mm -hmm. um, in what they choose for electives as our as our own students. So there's not much difference. We haven't seen them kind of any kind of trends where they've gone into more music or more world language, those kind of things. They've come in as pretty typical mm -hmm. and a kind of a spread. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do they um, you know, fill out a class, allow us to offer classes that we wouldn't otherwise offer? Is that um, not really because of the, you know, with 25 students, and yep. because the number of our classes, they really don't um, mm -hmm. make a difference in what class we offer. What it does allow us the privilege to do is, um, the consistency to do is, when we have fluctuations in our own in eighth grade, and I've staffed and worked with Dan on that to staff for about 260 to 75 ninth graders. 
when we're able to um, fill that gap almost every year. We have typically about 25 or 30 open enrollment students. It allows me to, to remain stable with my staffing and not have to decrease folk staffing or put a lot of staff on overloads. So it, it's kind of a luxury for us because we're able to have a really consistent number when we use open enrollment to fill that space. Great, thank you. Okay. I have a motion to approve. I move approval of the 2020-2021 open enrollment recommendations as presented. Uh, second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. Second is a revised 2019-2020 co-curricular and predictive schedule. Okay, so I, I gave the board a little bit of a, you know, background information on this one. It's a little bit of a unique, uh, normally when we're adding a co-curricular position, it's because it's a new program. And as you know, the diving is not a new program for our school, but um, until in the past, we have never actually employed our own dive coach. And so we've, our divers have utilized um, a coach from an area school the last few years has been working with Edgewood. Um, but as we look at this, we, the difference is it's not a co-op. So our divers are actually with our school swim team when they compete together in, in our WIA tournaments. Um, so it's not a, an actual co-op. So the reality is that we've been making some payments to this coach and it really needs through IRS regulations, the person needs to be an employee of the district. He's coaching our kids you know, so that you should have a separate contract with Manila Grove School District. And so that's why we're looking to add the position of dive coach to our schedule. And as far as the dollar amount, that's very comparable to what um, Edgewood and what coach has been paid, as well as we look at the rest of our comparables for different coaching positions. That was a recommendation from our high school administration uh, for that dollar amount. Is that one of our, our staff already or? Uh, the coach is not a teacher in our building. Okay. Okay, but he's worked with our students in the past. Okay, I see. Yeah. In in the future, though, those positions would go to uh, uh, the Nora Grove employees or teachers first, correct? If we have teachers, if it opens up. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we always. I move approval of the revised 2019-2020 curricular and additive schedule as presented. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Discussion items. Policy revisions for first reading. Is it, uh, again, if it's, uh, I, I would like to make a motion. Uh, this, this is just discussion. This is the first reading. Yeah, this is discussion. <laughs> oh, first reading. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the last one. Uh, uh, sorry if it's okay. Yeah, the majority of these are from the last NEOLA update. Sorry. And so yeah. our policy these committee. Are basically not substantive. Yeah. Right. It's basically, line, yeah. it's been a change in the statute by adding a word or taking a word yeah. out or adding a statutory reference and and just so you know we check every single statutory reference to make sure the language is consistent um, we check all of their recommendations um, takes us a really long time yeah for how few real changes there are here yeah that's we'll see a lot that. <laughs> it's a lot it looks like a yeah. lot but it's it's the, it's, it's Basically, little stuff, yeah. right? It's nothing uh, major. I, I was not one of interest, and this is really, to me, more of a correction from Neola the graduation requirements. Oh, right. For whatever reason, the board approved graduation requirements as far as how many credits you know for each subject mm -hmm. area were not part of the policy, even though it was board action to approve and, and, right. and so on. And for whatever reason, Neola placed them in admin guidelines, and that made no sense because yeah, I have the authority to change the admin guidelines, but I don't have the, the authority to change you know graduation requirements. So they're in the actual policy to me where they belong or should have always been to begin with. So there's nothing different there. It's just where they are. Yeah. And easier to find. <laughs> First three. You're right. Yeah. Um, I, 
I might just a procedural thing on the uh, on the way these are posted. Um, uh, the public, for the most part, I mean, the, we, we, when I look at board docs, I get the administrative contract and click and see the new policies. Mm -hmm. um, but and they're not posted that way under public content, um, yeah. meaning they can't see the public can't see them. Has yeah. Yeah. and I, I would think that I don't see any reason why these drafts can't be put as part of the public public. Yeah, the reason is because the way board docs worked, while they're in draft, you have to have a login in order to view them. So if we did post these links in public, people from the public couldn't see them anyway without a password, login password. So we have had people contact our office in the past that have had an interest. So we do make sure we list the policies and public content that are up for review. And if someone requests a copy of them, Joyce can print the PDF and, and you know email oh, them that way. That's annoying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the public should have be able to see these. Well, they do the see the, they do see the final ones, and but yeah, that's. I mean, yeah. I think that's. that's the Ola is really restrictive. You yeah, know. but this is just a board doc sort of bug, is all. I right. I know, but it's also a Neola bug, and that is that when you're trying to remember the old days. Actually, you you can because I tried this again. If if we're already logged into our board docs and we want to look at another district's policy that has board docs, you can't get in. Yeah, you have to totally log out of ours. ours. But I did try looking some up the other day before I ever logged into ours, and I was able to get yeah. into those very yeah. districts we talked yeah. about. So it just, it's hard. Yeah, it's just difficult I to work. I, I just think we ought to make sure the public has access to these right. before we approve them. Well, so. yeah, we, we do, but in a cumbersome way. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it isn't that we withhold it because we don't want to see it because it's a draft. It's because it's difficult to access. Right. Okay. Moving on. The 2020 proposed WASP delegate assembly resolutions. Uh, I am the delegate for the WASP for us. If there is anything. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, for, thank you for putting me on that uh, first year. <laughs> That's right. Um, I read through them all and I, I thought they all made sense and I was actually pleased to see the one on the Native American mascots went in yes. pretty much as we directed because I wasn't sure it would. So. With, and with some caveats that I thought were good. Right. So, I, 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 my personal recommendation would be support all of them, but right. I don't know how everybody else feels. Anybody we usually just get a sense. I don't, we don't usually. And if there's something you want to dis discuss about, um, you can always email me, and then I can look at it and we can talk. With, okay, yeah. can do that. And then um, just let everybody know that um, on Thursday, <coughs> At the WASB convention, I was asked and I accepted to be on the equity panel. Oh. So that would be a who. Okay. <laughs> oh, and also, well, while well, we're on the delegate assembly, it's kind of relevant. The WP, the Wisconsin Public Education Network, is having a gathering again on Thursday. And I'll just forward that to everybody to make sure you get it. All right. All right. I think one of the important ones, by the way, is the mental health categorical aid. Is right. to establish a uh, what is it, a twenty-five dollar uh, or up to, you know, but a, a stipend for schools and a categorical aid for mental health. Uh, for the yeah, those money ones very rarely go anywhere, but it's good to have them. I know, they, keep, they keep plugging away. I mean, well, they, it do. gives them the basis to ask for it. Yeah. Yeah. Continually. Exactly. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, facilities planning update. Okay, um, so the, the first part that is kind of the monthly, you know, written report is, you know, pretty short because, you know, we're to the, you know, pro final process of the design. Um, and so there are two new items on here that, uh, you know, Jared can speak to, or both of us can for that matter. Uh, but the furniture pilot is a really exciting part. Um, you know, and, and Reed is taking leadership with that and working with our teachers, and you see some photos attached. Um, really excited and, and the initial has only been what since break and some of the initial feedback from some of our teachers is, is really positive and so uh, so if you have any questions about the furniture pilot it's great in the photos it's pretty cool <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like it. my only question about this for the furniture on the furniture is related to its durability compared to more traditional um, furniture and this what is a long-term the cost of the, over its lifetime going to be, and do we have any comments or thoughts on that? I mean, do, if we could provide any data. 
I actually have no response to that. <laughs> 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 uh, I mean, one. does the manufacturer, do they provide us any, any uh, idea of what the experience is for this kind of stuff in terms of its durability and schools? So, I mean, so during the process of selecting this, and we can also speak to this, is obviously the stuff that we've selected. So some of the stuff is obviously not as durable as obviously a desk is. Yeah. So we do have desks still in the classrooms, um, but we've definitely been reassured from the you know, the vendor. And so these are things that we also will be reaching out to other schools to check to have some of this stuff okay. to verify. I mean, obviously they're telling us that it has a long shelf life <coughs> with face on what it's made out of, but we also want to verify that. So. Right. I mean, because my, my only concern is if we spend a lot of money on this, right. we have to replace it all in 10 years because that's not in the budget. Whereas, I mean, if our service life is the same desk is 20 years, how does this compare? And I don't, I don't even know. But we need to be careful about the budget. For. Just to push our old furniture way past its limit. Well, I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As you know, what, I've, I've part, yeah. what I have experienced out in Sun Prairie, <coughs> the new elementary school, it seems like the kids don't do all of that pushing and fair wear and tear on them because it, it's comfortable. It's uh, everything is open. It seems like the the mind. You know the brain change of the traditional, and and now they, it seemed like you know, with, I don't know, it's the ambiance of the, right. the classroom now is, you know, less wear and tear on them. They yeah. feel so relaxed and but, comfortable. But all you forget is what need is one student who thinks well, it'd be fun to punch this phone full of holes with my pencil. You know, I just want to know that be reassured that other districts have experience with this. Mm -hmm. That shows that it's reasonably durable. Um, and is not going to be a budgetary problem for us in a few years. That's what I want to be sure of. Not that I don't like it. I get you. And if there's a more durable alternative for that, yeah. How many, uh, how many schools um, have been built like the past, what, three, four years now yeah. that has this furniture, you know, like Wanaki or Lake Mills has Lake some. Mill. I would say any of the schools that have been built in the last number of years, this yeah. is the type of furniture. We should probably yeah. get yeah. look at investigate yeah. and ask them how is it holding up. The problem with that is it doesn't answer the question because if it's been there three or four years, I need to know is well, I may not know, yeah, yeah, but it's worth asking the question. Yeah. Yeah. It could I go in these school classrooms, it already looks like the school I went to. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> you know, five rows of seven. <laughs> <laughs> sit on the floor now. It's relaxed, comfortable now. So. As a former special education student, I really appreciate that they're able to be flexible mm -hmm. and be comfortable. Yeah, I, I think that's a really valid point mm -hmm. as far as how they treat the furniture, too, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they like it. And so yeah. you're not going to have, well, it's mostly middle school kids who are always leaning back in their chairs because they're not right. comfortable at all yeah. for a lot of kids. Yeah. So this is nice. But so I hope yeah. we find out they're reasonably durable. <laughs> yeah, we just, yeah. We just right. I, that's a value. Right. But it's a zero sum game. If we're spending more on furniture, sure. we're spending less on something else. Right. That's all. Yep. yep. It's worth all looking right. into. Anything else? And then you know, the second piece. Uh, last month, uh, you know, it was reported, you know, that we we're wrapping up the you know bidding process and subcontracting, and so Jared has posted the. Uh, uh, final uh, pieces of that, as well as some information about the process, so you can answer any questions you have on that. Um. So, Jared, yeah, we're going to talk about this right. first. So, um, the two documents that, and I apologize for just getting them uploaded this afternoon, but I wanted to put in writing with the only book view of the bid process is. So, I've been fortunate enough to, um, in my previous school district, to go through a building of a new school and we've been here to have some other opportunities to work with some other contractors and I can tell you that this bid experience that I've went through the last couple months has been probably one of the most uh, transparent in my opinions um, and easy to work with so I wanted to list that out because I think one of the things that is really sometimes frustrating is is that you know we have a construction manager which is you know different than an owner's rep and the construction manager also um, performed some of these duties. Um, and that was part of the reason that I did recommend going with a construction manager is because if there's a situation that happens and we need that school to open up in two or three weeks, we can fall back and ask Fendorf to do that as we continue to move forward. Where an owner's rep might not be able to do that, they have to bring someone else in. Um, so what we did is Fendorf wrote all the trade packages um, based off of EUA. So it's not like they're writing an RFP and asking for different types of qualifications. 
EUA pretty much writes the specs. Like this is the type of steel we want. This is where it needs to go at. Um, and so what Findorf does is they compile all that and they send it out. Um, so they sent us a list of all the proposed bidders that they have dealt with in the past and sent bids out from all the other school projects that they've done. In addition to that, we were able to provide uh, Findorf with a list of vendors that we have worked with, either with GDS or other projects that we've done. In addition to that, there's really two large bid clearing houses out there where you can just post it and people are going there and checking for bids. In addition, we did publish it in the um, Herald Independence that we were that these bids were available to make sure that we were trying to cover every aspect. In addition to all that, once we sent out the bids, the um, bids that Findorf had identified, they had told us ahead of time the trade packages that they were going to bid on. Those bids were due to me, not to Findorf. The other part of it is, is when Findorf sent out all those, I contacted all those companies that were bidding on a package that Findorf was going to, to let them know that those bids were due to myself and that we would encourage people to bid on this package, that it wasn't a guarantee that Findorf was getting it. We wanted to ensure that. And I can tell you there were a couple of projects that are trade packages that the lowest bidder was someone else and we went with someone else that Findorf bid on. Um, so, Jay, I have a quick question. So like for carpentry, for example, the, those, the, the bids never went to Findorf, they went to you. So on carpentry, they and came you to made me. a decision based on the bids that you got that Findorf was the lowest bid, the best for that. Okay. Yes. Yep. Um, and so that was the bidding process. And so then on bid day, um, all the other bids went to Findorf. We met at Findorf and EUA was there and myself were there and we opened those uh, bids that went up there. And then like Eric said, the bids that came to me, I opened those up after the two o'clock to um, put them into the overall spreadsheets. Um, we then worked through those that, you know, um, the spreadsheet really shows who the lowest bidder is and then we list out all the other bidders. And then we contact those bidders to verify the bids that were submitted. Because you know, you might have a, a difference between a 45%. So you might have someone that's at you know, a million dollars and someone's at 1.7. Well, why is that happening? So we want to vet those out to ensure that we're not going, the goal of it is, is to eliminate change orders later on in the process. Mm -hmm. right. So we didn't want to have someone that was going to bid at 1.7, and that was truly probably what the bid should have been, but someone came in at a million dollars, and they were, and that's who we selected. So we, we go through that, and Findorf and UA vet all those bids out, and then they compile that list, and then the district makes the decision of who to hire. What I can tell you is that um, on all the bids that came back, we ultimately <coughs> went with the lowest, most qualified bid. There was no bids that came back where we decided that um, this company was um, Qualified. Qualified and twenty thousand dollars <coughs> we went with them. I can tell you that all the bids that came back that were selected, uh, or the subcontractors that is in that other list that shows the breakdown between the new school and renovations, those were all the lowest bidders that we did um, recommend today. Um, trade package structural steel and metal has been there's two of those. One was awarded to Breeze, one was awarded to Findorf. Um, uh, what's why is it split in two? Uh, I wish one of you were looking at it's one renovation, one So I separated out. So there's the first section is. Ah, uh, you're yes, right. I'm sorry. I apologize. You're right. I have the type that one's a renovation and one's a. Okay, right. So we did get those out separately, and we did the renovations first, gotcha. um, right before Thanksgiving, and then right before winter break, we brought in the new school. Can you do us a favor and forward us your spreadsheet with the bidders and the bid amounts? I want to see how this all adds up to his new school. Okay. Thanks. All right. Future meeting dates. Future meeting dates. Future meeting dates. We've got this special board meeting coming up January 29th. Uh, TLE. Yep. 14th. What are they? The uh, TLE committee meeting is uh, January 14th at 6. So you yeah, have to draw attention to full board special meetings here this next month. So the 15th 
of January is the uh, second equity is to specifically for board members in DeForest at 5.30. If you have not registered and are still interested, you may register yet this week. Um, I will say there unfortunately wasn't a ton of information, detail provided to board members about what the, the content was. And I've since got more information. It's really going to be focused on policy. Um, and they've asked us even to bring along a couple of our sample policies, and they're going to examine, you know, that piece of it. So I'll get an email out to the board with okay, that new you. information. Um, but it'll be facilitated by the same individuals that were in the first one, with Percy Brown and, and uh, Rainey Briggs. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the email we got earlier in the week at this point, um, there were some 50 some people in Dane County board members that were registered. So you know, the the last one because that was here. Yeah. Um, you know, because of prior engagement, I couldn't attend except when I got the last half hour, and I learned a lot in the last half hour. So I'd recommend with those facilitators, I would recommend this. Yeah. Uh, so, so we'll send a reminder email tomorrow with the additional information that we received. And if you haven't registered, please consider it if you're available. Um, and then, as it was noted, the special board meeting on the 29th. Um, and then just want to confirm we put this date out but I just um, we have scheduled February 5th for our next board workshop that would be with Jill Huskisson and looking at long-range budget planning so we need to confirm that I mean that's a date that Jill is available uh, but if you have an opportunity to look at your calendars now to make sure that we can make that work we haven't talked about that. what's the date I will not be, I will be, not be open that is February 5th it's a Wednesday I will not be Anyone else with a conflict that night? Take me a while to boot up. Okay. <laughs> Would you like us to consider a different date? No, I'm fine with you guys going. If I'm the only one, go ahead. Okay. Okay. So at this point, we'll have it scheduled. If you, after tonight, you realize you do have a conflict please let us know as soon as possible but otherwise we'll, we have we'll keep that as a firm date then okay um, so those are the only two special full board you know meetings and then you need to schedule one based upon tonight's motion another right. special meeting and that we said we'd try to do it in january so that doesn't give us a lot of date time so we should look at a couple dates maybe On, I think one of the problems is that WSB comes right in the middle of that. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the pre-workshop, that's Tuesday. So that basically leaves Monday the 20th and Monday the 27th, maybe the 28th. <coughs> maybe Thursday the 16th, right? Yes. We have a period yeah. meeting. Oh, oh, okay. Learning can't do that. One. We do a Saturday morning or afternoon. I don't know. That's fine. Did you say Saturday? I do a Saturday morning. We've done that before the past. We have done that sometimes. Yeah. 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 Or we have to. Well, I want four hours. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so, <laughs> Aaron can't make it Saturday. Saturday. So we no, eliminated Saturdays. Every Saturday. Yeah. We eliminated the 16th. Yes. Um, Monday the 20th. That's, well, it's not my favorite, but I could make it work. <laughs> yeah. I do it, at least, we could do it at least by six. Okay, so nobody's saying no to that. Um, Monday the 27th. I have, uh, yeah, again, by six. I have plan commission that night, but we I have don't personnel know. Oh, okay. oh, that's oh, that's right. We do have that also for four to six. We do it after the first night. We have what do we have for? I have plan commission at seven, but I could if that's what about uh, Tuesday the twenty eighth? Yeah. That would work. Tuesday the twenty eighth. That would work. That works for me. Tuesday the twenty eighth. Okay. At six, is that what we're gonna say? Tuesday. And then if we January's just want to back up, just to make sure we've got stuff, we could try. Um, Monday, February 3rd, Tuesday, February 4th, just as backup. Or what about Thursday, the 30th? Is that up? 
Can we just try yeah. it? Can we just try with the one gate first oh, and see what happens? Don't you have it for that night? No, because I have it first uh, Saturday. Oh, oh that's right. Yeah. Okay, so we've confirmed Tuesday, January 28th, 6 o'clock. If yeah. that doesn't work, can you give back? But we were going to offer them two dates. Yeah. Well, I can't, I, this time, I, I don't, well, you guys can't, I, I can't offer another date at this time in February. Oh, but did you, did, can you do the either the 27th or 28th in January? Well, yeah, 28th, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, <laughs> offer the 28th and see if that works. Okay, yeah. we were going to try and offer Two dates to those people. Yeah. It's possible that 27th would work for me. I, I just don't know. Maybe sometimes the plan question gets canceled, but I don't know. I guess my recommendation is let's get the let's 28th out. And, and then if that doesn't work for him, yeah. Yeah. Right. What, what was the What was the feeling about the 20th? What? I know you have plan commission, so we No, I don't have the 20th. Oh, I have okay. something else. The 20th. Yeah, well, is it Mel? You're not available. Oh, right, right. I got it. I got it. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, got it. Got a bunch of things that go over Oh, me. that's Saturday program. <laughs> I forgot to mention. Okay, so we uh, agree it's to yeah. the 28th. Okay. Also, while we're just while we're talking about things, Shelby sent information about the MLK program at Middleton on Saturday the 18th, and I went to that last year. It was really good. Yeah. And they've got a good lineup this year, too, so I would just encourage people to try to go to that. Okay, can I have a motion for adjournment? So move. Second. Second. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.